This is the first video in my car care and ownership series, as you can see by the orange banner in the thumbnail. So far, I've only made learner driver videos, but I'm planning to make all kinds of videos to help you get the most out of motoring and hopefully save you money. I've left a link in the description to who I believe would be the cheapest for car insurance. If you get a quote with them, let me know if they're cheaper because I'm interested to know if I'm right. In this video, I'm gonna see what the inside of my engine looks like after 145,000 miles of use. Then I'm gonna have a power run to see how much power it's putting out and to see how much power it's lost in that time. Then it's gonna be cleaned using hydrogen and oxygen. And then I will do another power run afterwards and another visual inspection to see if it looks any cleaner. Over the last six months, my car seems to have been coming down with a little bit of a cold. It doesn't idle very smoothly, and in higher gears under full throttle, it is a little bit hesitant. So I did a bunch of the usual fault-finding diagnostics to try and figure out what was wrong, but everything seems to be working fine. So what's wrong with it? There's been a lot of talk recently about direct injection vehicles getting clogged up with carbon. And my car's direct injection, so I thought maybe that's the problem with my car. In under 15 seconds, newer cars are more likely to be direct injection. In fact, most are these days. And direct injection does not spray fuel on the intake valves, and therefore the intake valves don't get cleaned by the fuel. Whereas traditional port injection did. So newer cars are more likely to get clogged up with oily deposits and carbon on the intake valves, which is the equivalent to your car having a blocked nose. Was that 15 seconds? So if your car has more than 50,000 miles on it and you're starting to experience a lumpy idle or hesitation under acceleration or even worse, a misfire under acceleration, which gradually gets worse over time, this may be your problem. Also, not all mechanics seem to be aware of this problem, so you could spend a lot of time and money trying to fix your car when all it needs is a clean. Well, a carbon clean. There are different ways to clean carbon off of your intake valves. Some are expensive and can cost up to a thousand pounds. They definitely work, but I'm interested in a technique that only costs 99 pounds to see if that works. So before and after hydrogen and oxygen engine clean coming up now. I've taken the car to Rally Sport Automotive in Colchester where Shane is going to remove my charge cooler and intake manifold so that we can take a look and see just what the valves look like. Now bear in mind at this stage, I had no idea what my valves were gonna look like. And although my engine has done 145,000 miles, the cylinder head was replaced 85,000 miles ago due to a manufacturing defect. So the dirt you're gonna see, or the oily carbon deposits you're gonna see, are gonna be only 85,000 miles worth, not 145,000 miles worth. Intake manifold off, and you can see the four air inlets, which allow air to pass into the engine. Before I show you what's inside, click on the pop-out banner to guess how much carbon you're expecting to see. My guess was a small amount. In fact, I was hopeful to find at least some because then I'd know what the problem was with my car and therefore I'd be able to fix it. Cylinder one, valve one. And I wish I recorded my reaction. I was not expecting to see it that bad. It's gross. And much the same story on valve two, then cylinder two, valve one, cylinder two, valve two, all very bad. And then finally the valves on cylinder three and four. Yeah. It's really hard to take good photos of something down a dark hole. In fact, funnily enough, my smartphone was the best at doing it. I've left a link in the description for what smartphone I'm using, but I do actually have quite a good camera with a macro lens as well. And given my wonderful photography skills, most images came out like this. But I did get lucky once. Look at all that detail on this one. This is cylinder one, and you can really see how thick the carbon buildup is here and here. That's definitely gonna have a negative effect on how my engine runs and how much power it produces. That's like you trying to run when you have a cold you're not gonna be breathing at your best. Next step is for Shane to put all this back together and hand my car back to me. And now it's time to find out exactly how much power my car is producing. To do this, I needed a rolling road, essentially a treadmill for a car, which I found at Velocity Tuning in Colchester, run by Tommy, who is famous for his F10 BMW M5 with a thousand, yes, that's like 10 times the power of the average family car, a thousand horsepower in one comfy saloon. This is Tommy who will be conducting the power run. How much power do you think it will have? 
I think you're going to have a, a small drop. I'm, I'm expecting to see around 133, 135 brake horsepower still. Not every day you see a learner car on the rolling road. Click on the pop-out banner to guess how much power you think it's lost over the course of 145,000 miles. I know this cylinder head has 85,000 miles on it, but the rest of the engine still has 145,000 miles on it. So Tommy, give me the news, what's the, what's the power figure? Okay, so I'm actually quite surprised. Yeah. You are down massively on power. Yeah. So roughly about 20 brake horsepower. Your torque's not too dissimilar, but I think from speaking to you, um, it's not making its torque where it should. So you should have that power instantly mm -hmm. and you're not getting that. So yeah, it looks like from these uh, dyno tests, you could benefit from having your system cleaned. So it's supposed to have 138 horsepower mm -hmm. in factory. What's it got now on the best run? On the best run, we made 121.3. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's terrible. <laughs> it's not so good, is it? So do you think the, car the carbon cleaning is going to work? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. So going back on the conversation we had earlier, mm -hmm. the reason why I quoted the numbers quite high is because I actually normally see these made just over what their claimed output is. Yeah. So you take into consideration that little bit of difference there, then the drop, You've, you're not expecting to see the um, power drop off that far. But actually seeing that your one's basically dropped off 20 brake horsepower means that there's a massive room for improvement and hopefully that is found during the cleaning. Now time for the magic to happen. Let's see how this man in this van from Engine Carbon Clean can help me. So this is Scott from Engine Carbon Clean. So tell us, Scott, how does this process actually work? All right, good morning. So our process works by adding pure oxygen and pure hydrogen yep. via the air intake. Okay. And that travels through the engine wherever the air goes through the engine. So the hydrogen helps the fuel burn better, yep. which is how we create carbon in the first place because yes. the fuel's not burned. And the oxygen helps break down the carbon deposit, the whole dry carbon as it passes through the engine. It gets burnt off and then passed out of the exhaust. Will it make the engine squeaky clean? Like, will, it be, will I be able to see shiny valves? Will it still be a little bit dirty? I, 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 I doubt very much if we can yeah. get rid of the whole lot in one go, no. Do you think it will give me my 138 horsepowers back? We can improve on the brake horsepower. We can put back what you've lost, hopefully, yeah. This machine uses hydrolysis to split water into hydrogen and oxygen, which is then fed into my engine via this red tube. Then Scott revs the engine up and down to help with the clean. While this is happening, the exhaust gas is monitored using a gas analyzer thingy to monitor the process and make sure everything is working as it should. The whole process takes about 45 minutes, as you can see on this handy LCD display. When Scott is finished, he packs up his kit and makes his way to his next customer. The whole process costs 99 pounds. Let's see if it's worth it. Well, carbon cleaning done. Question is, has it made a difference? Time to find out. Now I'm fairly certain I would notice an extra 17 horsepower in my car if it happened instantaneously, but it doesn't quite work like that. It's supposed to take about a week for the carbon to clean up fully. So I have a power run in a week's time to see if the figures are different. But for now, let's see if I can tell the difference just after the test. Firstly, I'm going to hold the revs at 1,500 RPM and then floor the throttle in third gear to see how smooth it pulls away. Before the clean, it was slightly hesitant up to about 3,000 RPM where it smoothed out. So third gear down to 1,500 RPM and full gas now. Tiny bit of hesitation, but overall, I think that is better. Now I'm gonna try the same thing in second gear. So 1,500 RPM in second gear and floor the throttle. No hesitation there. And back down 
to 30 as I'm coming into a 30. The question is, does it feel faster? And I have to say, no, it doesn't feel any quicker than it was before. Third gear pulls a little bit better. There's less hesitation in third gear under full throttle, but the overall time it takes me to get to 60 miles an hour doesn't feel any quicker. And my engine lights just started flashing, literally. So I've just pulled over at home and the engine light is flashing again. And to be honest, the engine does feel a little bit shaky at idle. Idle is when your engine's running, but you're not revving it. You're not going, you're not making it go any faster. And it is a, it's slightly lumpy, although it is better than before. So I'm really hoping that in a week it will get better. Better, much better. The car idles better. It pulls more strongly in third gear with less hesitation. And I would say there's just this, this incy little bit more power, although that could be psychological, of course. Um, it's not perfect, however. It's not like the car was when the car was new. I think there's still an improvement to be made, but I'm quite pleased so far. I would say it's we wound the clock by about four months, which given how many miles I do, is probably about a year's worth of driving for most people. Time to go back to velocity tuning and see how much power it has. Here we are, learn a car on rolling road again, about to find out if I have any more horsepower. What do you think? Click on the pop-out banner again and guess what horsepower increase you think it has. So that's the power run. Tell me the figures and how much more horsepower do I have? Okay, so you've gained three brake horsepower. Three? Yes, three brake. But there are a couple of variables that need to be taken into consideration. Okay. One is by looking at my skin. You see, it's <laughs> very hot and sweaty. Yes. So the hotter it is. It's a very is, hot day. Yeah, you're going to lose a little bit of power because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and you have variables between each run. So you have gained three brake at the wheels, and looking at your torque, you've gained three newton meters as well. Three. Yes. Three horsepower and three newton meters of torque. Well, to be honest, I didn't expect much more power. My bum meter was telling me the car didn't have much more power. If it did, it was small, but the car runs a lot better and that's what I've been aiming for. So time to go back to Rally Sport Automotive to see if these valves look any less gross than they did before the carbon clean. And we're back with Shane at Rally Sport Automotive in Colchester, taking off my inlet manifold to see what these valves look like. Again, click on the pop-out banner and guess whether you think these valves are gonna be any cleaner. And now for the moment of truth, what is it going to look like in these four holes? Cue the before and after images. Okay, not much difference. Basically the same. Moving on to cylinder one valve two. Uh, yeah, I think it actually looks worse in the after photo if I'm honest. I know they're not perfect photos, but you can get it. Then cylinder two, valve one. Oh, let's move on. And the next one, okay, you get the picture. All of them, they don't look any better. They might even look a little bit worse. And here is a before and after of the spark plugs. I don't think they look much different, but they didn't really look bad to begin with, so I didn't expect them to get much better. And here's a comparison of a new spark plug versus a spark plug with 36,000 miles in it. You can see the slightly larger gap between the electrodes of the old spark plug. This happens as the spark plug wears, which is why it is important to replace them periodically. Look at your owner's manual to find out how often you should replace them. So my verdict, does hydrogen and oxygen cleaning and engine work? And I would have to say yes, yes it does. Although the oily deposits on the intake valves is still there, the company did say it wouldn't remove oily deposits. However, the car does run better and there is a power increase, so therefore it must have worked. I'm guessing the process cleaned parts of the engine I can't see, like the piston head, uh, the turbo and the catalytic converter. And here you can see a wonderful forged piston and the head is covered in carbon. And this was in my other car for less than a thousand miles. So you can see the carbon buildup 
in such a short period of time. My bet is the hydrogen and oxygen engine clean has attacked this stuff more than the valves, which is why I can feel the improvement. But all engines suffer from carbon buildup on the pistons, not just direct injected ones. So while this carbon cleaning method definitely works, it's definitely improved the performance of my car a little bit, it hasn't solved my problem of the valves being clogged up with carbon and oily deposits, which is because it's direct injected. And that is definitely having a negative impact on how my car performs and may explain my 14 horsepower loss in power. So therefore, I need to make more videos, trying out different methods to clean these valves. Subscribe to my channel to find out which method works. I like to recommend Rally Sport Automotive in Colchester, engine carbon clean and velocity tuning in Colchester. Not because they're paying me, in fact, I had to pay them, but they're really good at what they do and a joy to deal with. That's all for this one. Like if you like it. Remember to subscribe if you want to find out how I get on with this engine. More videos coming soon.